hope is not a strategy. Because if hope is a strategy, there is only one solution. They did not make the mistake once. They did, they committed it multiple times and that's they have spent about 18 billion dollars and kept them afloat till the ship sank. And even a company like Google can sometimes miss it. The intent of this entire course on entrepreneurial mindset is to help you learn about how entrepreneurs think and act and help you choose and use some of these cognitive tools, behavioral tools, actions in your roles as managers in organizations. Today we're going to cover a very, very important and interesting aspect of startups and that's called failures. Any top reasons you've heard in recent times about why startups fail? So while teaching a course like entrepreneurship, right, failure is inevitable. It's not just in entrepreneurship. Even if you act like an entrepreneurial manager inside an organization, I want my students to know that it is kind of imminent, right? that when you try new things, when you're dealing with uncertain situations, you're bound to fail. Once we know how to decipher failure, it, is, it gives us an opportunity to learn because otherwise people keep saying, hey, learn from failure. But, but if you don't even know why failure happens and how failure happens and start looking at it objectively, it's, it's uh, very unreasonable to tell a person, start learning from failure. Right? So the main reasons which we have heard is lack of innovation and lack of planning. Timing the market is also a very Timing, issue. okay. Sir, a lot of startups uh, concentrate on customer acquisition and not customer retention. Okay. So even if they start off well, uh, it drops after a point when, once the customers, they start losing the customers. Very interesting. So you get everybody in and then slowly there's the leak through which everyone's going out. So there are many, many reasons and people give reasons. So what we're going to try to do in this class is to look at some of these cases on startups and some of the failed ones and try to build a little model of how can we use this framework to look at a startup and see if the startup will actually survive or will it have troubles as it goes along? How many of you have actually prepared? Very cool. Some of you can share some of the cases of uh, failed startups that interested you. Okay, let's start with Srinidhi. Domain of finance, we looked into Zest Money. It's a consumer lending fintech company and uh, it was co-founded by three uh, former Wonga Employees, I picked Zest Money because uh, it had a combination of factors that led to its downfall. It is a case where you could have reduced a lot of, uh, you know, factors that led to failures. It had RBI regulations that played a role in it. Then there was this uh, imperfect business model. This is one of the reasons why I chose Zest Money because there was a lot to learn from it. So I would like to talk about the reasons they failed. So their value proposition was that it was a buy now pay later firm. They entered the market with the promise that they will bridge the gap for insufficient credit access in India. Okay. But the reason they failed was because uh, their main customer segment was youth and low-income customer segments. So for this, you don't need to have any credit card or any formal credit channel. You could get uh, a loan or any product on EMI very easily. Zest Money was based on Buy Now, Pay Later. I had heard about Buy Now, Pay Later, but I learned more about it uh, when researching on it. And uh, I think it's imperfect because it is. I feel it's just too early and uh, we've not gauged the customers properly. And there is no proper, we don't check their credit worthiness and so on, which was the problem with Zest Money. And the founders came from a similar background. They had worked for a fintech lending company called Wonga which was based on this BNPL model a uh, more rudimentary BNPL model and they thought that they would learn from all the mistakes and you know improve it and get this money up and running but unfortunately that did not happen what do you see missing what are the missing pieces of all these things there's opportunity there's team there's there's so many factors Yes, one thing they um, um, discuss many of the things of the business aspect of uh, Zest Money, but one thing I, I think they uh, did not mention about their internal financial structures that how did they manage their own debt and the equity to balance the and to grow their uh, business further. One thing that Orco talks about is. Uh, Lack of clarity on, uh, you know, managing finances. So I think they had a value proposition, but what they really failed to see was, okay, uh, the VC money is going there, but uh, was it really that unique a value proposition? I mean, microfinancing has been successful in so many areas. Yeah. Like uh, we learn from the Bangladeshi economy, right? And that's how it gained traction. Right. But uh, was there really any differentiator? What, what mm. 
they were supposed to do differently and that's why they failed to execute it yeah so value proposition you're saying is there because yeah that's what all others are doing but what's the magic potion what makes you unique the uniqueness was questionable so and was it unique enough i think that's the bigger question like uh, yeah so so we did we work and i think we are all aware of how big a company that was at one point it was valued about 47 billion around about 2019 we saw that in 2019 it was uh, it valued about 47 billion dollars and now it had, it had come down to almost nothing and it has been very recently has filed for bankruptcy so we uh, looked upon various startups um, and uh, we chose we work because uh, A, it has recently uh, filed for bankruptcy. B, it was one of the most colossal failures in the world of startups. Forty-seven billion to almost nothing now. So here we we saw that why such kind of failures. That was uh, initial thought as I had. Uh, why so such big names could not figure out what could go wrong with this company. So this was our initial aim. to understand uh, about this company and we did our research second hand research uh, from the various news outlets or various uh, publications and we came up with this companies usually are trying to get fundings from vcs and they are doing a lot of rapid growth whereas they are not focusing on sustainable growth in itself where we we found this in the company we work itself nowadays the startups are not focusing on making money but they are more focusing on raising money So mostly what they are doing is they are not making a single penny they are not making profits but since they have a lot of cash and cash flow so they are utilizing it to make a facade that they are actually doing something worthwhile very interesting you brought a very interesting point up before i go to the next case is what are startups actually working for a lot of startups these days are not really create focusing too much on value creation they actually playing something what we call as the valuation game because that's where the speed element comes in because how quickly can i become large in size vis a vis me just trying to create value for my customers or potential users yeah we don't really have so much prepared content on failure and uh, one reason for that is a lot of people who fail don't want to talk about failure especially in our society but the moment i allow them to choose the failures that they want to study the interest level in the class shoots up That's number one. Second is it gives us an idea of what are the failures that we can actually explore looking. So it's almost like saying, let's build a mini case set in class. We all know how Google has uh, transformed the internet space yes. uh, around the world. Yeah. But they did take a bold step to challenge the likes of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by try about uh, starting their own social media platform, which was. Google Plus. Okay, Google Plus. Okay, you bring a very different dimension here. Yeah. So, uh, it it uh, it was launched in the year 2011 and they focused on the basic principles providing connecting or networking space for the users and then using it as a advertising platform where people can advertise their products. Yeah. Uh although Facebook at that time had close to 800 million users, still Google wanted to they wanted to challenge uh, their competition Uh, facebook and they did try to bring a unique point which was uh, called the circle store which was an e-commerce function uh, which was unique at that point in time in 2011 because uh, facebook did not have any marketplace at that time but they could not capitalize on this uh, unique point that they tried to bring in people were not able to understand what actually it was so uh, probably they uh, brought in the feature a little too early where people could understand what it is also the user interface was quite complex and they failed to bring in the necessary uh, user engagement that was needed for a social media platform google plus i feel was important to bring into the discussion was we can see even if you have big resources behind you who are supporting you like the expertise of google who transformed the whole digital space you can still fail there's no guarantee that you have a lot of resources you have all the tech support you have all the money with you you can still fail if you are not able to understand what the customers want what uh, if you should have a unique proposition for your product initially i thought that probably they did not understand the user interface they were struggling to keep people engaged on their profile 
but once i had a detailed study of what business model they were trying to bring in so like i mentioned even in the discussion that there was a unique thing that they tried to bring in which was circles so nowadays facebook marketplace is a big big thing for facebook where they are able to generate revenue and all they brought it within 2011 12 phase so it was too early for consumers to understand. So speaking of Google Plus and how they wanted to compete with the likes of Facebook, yeah. uh, so in essence it's a social media platform, yes. it's a network good. Right. What Google faced to realize was that, uh, what Google did not realize was that uh, a network good is basically uh, more number of people using a product, the mm. more uh, you know beneficial it is to That's the one user. Yes. Right. Yeah. They thought they could leverage the size. Although, in my uh, opinion, I think the UI was much more simplistic and better than Facebook. Mm -hmm. The main problem was that since it's a network effect and a network good, that is the reason it failed. Google failed to understand the value of network effects. Anybody who understands what's Google's business? Yeah, advertising, but it's a very interesting point. There have been people who've been very, very good at understanding networks, data structures, uh, information management. These are people who should have understood network effects easiest. Why do you think they missed seeing the trouble or missed seeing this important factor? Why do you think they would have missed? Maybe not. Any, any, any guesses? I think uh, they might have been trying to uh, concentrate more on just keeping up with the competition or going at it from that angle rather than analyzing their core offering. Yeah, sometimes you get too uh, caught up by seeing what the competition is doing. So you're doing what peers are doing rather than what you want to do. It's very, and even a company like Google can sometimes miss it. It's a company that's very alert. It's very agile. It's used to starting and stopping and closing stuff. And even they can sometimes miss. So while it seems that ideally they shouldn't be missing this, uh, even even smart people can make mistakes. Almost every subject has a case study approach wherein, uh, as we saw in this class also, we either get a case to read beforehand or we get like topics that we research and then we come to class and then we uh, speak about it. We uh, There is an integration of the concept, the theoretical concept and a real life case study or a publication that has been written by Harvard etc. So I think that is very interesting and that actually invokes the learning in us. When Sir was concluding the class he was talking about uh, the different stages uh, that we go through like when you start a, there's a startup. So one thing he said was you start off with an idea but you don't immediately have a product which is not something I think a lot of people understand and that's not something that would usually come to your mind you think if you have an idea you have the product because that need is there in the market but he said you have to keep experimenting you have to keep uh, trying to uh, find the right fit in the market and especially you do that in the ideation stage so that then you can move on to the next validation stage. So I think that's something I did not know coming into the class and that was a really, as you said, an aha moment. Are you going to just simply say, hey, let me look at this, ah, Google started, let me put money or this guy is from, you know, this institute, let me put money or are you going to make a more scientific analysis before you put so much of money? If personally I am trying to invest money in some project, I will try to see what kind of value it's going to uh, propose to the people that it's catering to. So in the long run, whether it's Google or any small firm, it's not going to sustain if it's not providing value to the customer. Whenever any startup is launching a product, if it's new, if it's brand new, if it does not exist in the market, it's going to create a category of its own. But of course, it comes with its own risk that it has to take. Most of these investments are being made after careful analysis by very intelligent people. And despite all this analysis, we sometimes miss important things. And this is typical, especially in the VC world. Why do you think we miss? Why do you think people miss? Maybe at some point it gets emotional uh, because there was an instance for WeWork where huh? it is said that uh, the head of uh, SoftBank, uh, Mr. Masayoshi Son, actually decided to fund uh, we work in a matter of 15 20 minutes when i came in here i am a very spontaneous person so i really like to work around that but after uh, learning from raj sir one thing that i have really understood is the importance of form keeping yourself in a structure and kind of working on it and why those frameworks actually work for you is because they come with a lot of experiences for example tomorrow i am going to launch my xyz brand of course i will try to uh, i would try to launch a brand that i absolutely love something that i like but 
right now I am getting examples. I am learning things that come from past mistakes that have been made from others. So of course I'll keep the, uh, those things in mind and kind of also remember these frameworks whenever I like I can. Something that I actually learned was even though you might believe that this product like you might have absolutely 100% belief of this product working in the market it might not and from what i've learned in today's class it's really important to understand when to stop despite seeing that the company is not making any substantial profit softbank kept on pumping money very interesting and they did not make the mistake once they did, they committed it multiple times and that's they have spent about 18 billion dollars and kept them afloat till the ship sank so uh, vcs are not making uh, mistakes uh, off the bat, they are continuing covering up their mistakes for a long time. When you are allocating resources as a manager, it's, it's important for you to understand, have I over-invested? Is it time for me to stop investing this and move on to other pursuits? Because at the end of the day, a manager's important responsibility is resource allocation. I always say this in IT strategy, hope is not a strategy. Because if hope is a strategy, there is only one solution. What is that? Huh? Very good, he's attended my classes very well. He says, if hope is a strategy, there is only one solution, that's prayer. In Zest Money, a lot of math. I know this industry really well, I've come from that industry, I have functional experience, you know, I have prior entrepreneurship experience, I've raised money, etc. Still things can go wrong. Yeah. So it's all the more important for us to know that, you know, we are functioning in the right space. So the first set of things to ask yourself is, is this idea or is this space in which this environment in which the market, the sector, the industry, is this the space I should operate and do I have uh, capabilities to operate? So the question really to ask here is, uh, are startups failing because they are for lack of person environment fit? Are, are the founders working with the wrong set of opportunities? Are they working in the wrong spaces? That's number one. The last is intelligent failures. Intelligent failures are what you create for yourself. You, you put yourself, you set it up for yourself, which is what today we call in business parlance as business experimentation. Yeah. So previously before coming here, I worked in the R&D department. So we've done a lot of projects and products that have failed. So intelligent failure would be, you know, gauging the customer needs, gauging the, you know, competitor products. I just think a suitable scenario planning needs to be done you know even before you start the product you need to know what are the risks you need to identify the risks mitigate them and if the risks can be mitigated you can start the product if there is no solution or you know an alternative in place i think it, sh it should not be started and even beyond all this if we fail there's always a learning to take back this according to me is an intelligent failure so you want to set yourself up for intelligent failures which means you want to leave an element of uncertainty in your actions in your experiments so that you learn from them yeah so every action that you take to develop yourselves into good managers who can think and act entrepreneurially the goal is to create intelligent opportunities to fail so that you can learn from them because from the basic setup it's very difficult to learn anything you can only eliminate them yeah so we've learned and looked at a lot of aspects why it can be because of finances it can be lot lack of opportunity lack of business model design so on and so forth there are hundreds of reasons if you look at it objectively you will be able to locate them easily but most important is not to eliminate failures it's important to change or shift all the sets of failures to intelligent failure so you set yourself up for intelligent failure so that you have great opportunities to learn and develop yourself yeah so we stop there and we continue in the next class thank you so much for your fantastic participation and please come prepared for the next class thank you, thank you.